There exists only one treasure so elusive, so cryptic, that even the world's strongest militaries and most cunning thieves cannot break into its digital safe. It's a fortune hidden not in chests of gold, but in lines of code on public ledgers, lying there for the entire world to see. This film is an exploration of a phenomenon that transcends money, technology, and the material world. It's a journey into the realms of the intangible, where the real treasure lies not in the accumulation of wealth, but in the profound philosophical impact that an energy-based money like Bitcoin has on its participants. Join us on an epic journey to discover how there are no maps, no keys, and no source of energy on Earth that can steal Satoshi's wealth. This is a treasure like no other, where the stakes are measured not in numbers, but in time, discovering the very essence of money itself. The following article was written by Toma Strolite, the legendary treasure of Satoshi Nakamoto. We've asked Toma himself to read it to you because it's a fantastically well-crafted piece and is packed with jaw-dropping insights you won't want to miss. We're breaking this article into three parts, so make sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned over the next couple of months as we stagger the release of all three episodes. Prologue. Bitcoin is spiritual awakening. Money has not generally been regarded as having anything to do with journeys into the non-material realm of the spirit. It is generally believed to belong to the material world. It can buy certain things. But it cannot buy friendship, love, intelligence, or the answers to deep and eternal questions about the mysteries of the universe. In fact, money is accused of leading people away from these. This, however, takes us to the curious matter of Bitcoin. In 2009, a brand new form of money was created and released to the world. It was called Bitcoin. It went on to become the fastest asset in the world to reach a $1 trillion valuation. It garnered the attention of the entire financial world. Impressive, but not spiritual. Apart from that though, quite unexpectedly, Many people who study Bitcoin discover that it arouses within them life-altering spiritual journeys. When so few things in this world inspire such experiences, including many of the things that promise to do so, why does Bitcoin do this without making any such promises? Our search for the answer to this question begins at the beginning of Bitcoin's story. It is a story unlike any other. Part 1. The Mysterious Appearance and Disappearance of Satoshi Nakamoto The true origin story of Bitcoin's appearance in the world is one of the most fascinating mysteries ever told. Yet these events all took place in the 21st century, a time when everything is recorded and can be recalled, investigated, and verified. So it is true, verifiably. And the story goes like this. The year is 2008. An epic worldwide financial crisis threatens to destroy the entire global economy. It is known as the Great Financial Crisis. The world's governments and banks are unable to prevent it. At best, they manage to postpone the consequences, but worsen them in the process. Mass destruction looms in the air. Against this backdrop, seemingly out of nowhere, a mysterious figure appears. He calls himself Satoshi Nakamoto, but we never see his face and we never hear his voice because there is no actual individual named Satoshi Nakamoto. Satoshi Nakamoto is a disguise, an online persona. The real person behind this identity is able to keep his actual identity secret just like superheroes in the comics. Nobody asked for him to appear or to provide any help. Nobody knew he existed. Nobody knows his true identity. Yet, out of nowhere, he shows up and he brings with him an invention which he calls Bitcoin. He explains this invention's workings in a short, flawlessly written document. In this paper, 
He also presents a solution to a problem that mathematicians and computer scientists claimed could not be solved. They had proven that it could not be solved. Yet, despite the theoretical impossibility of solving this problem, Nakamoto provides a solution that does work in practice. And it is an essential part of how his invention functions. The invention itself works as a new form of money unlike any that came before it. It is an intangible yet incorruptible money ruled by no person, no institution, no company, and no government. It is rules without any rulers. For a couple of years, the mysterious Satoshi maintains the system, evangelizes the idea, and finds volunteers to run and tweak it alongside him. And then, poof, quietly, he simply disappears. It's an exit with no fanfare, not even an announcement. He merely leaves, eventually sending a final email to one developer saying he has moved on to other things and that Bitcoin is in good hands. He is never heard from again. What becomes of this invention then? Abandoned by its creator, is it now doomed? Hardly. Despite having no leader, no employees, no funding, and no marketing, Bitcoin roars to life and spreads throughout the world. It is not a democracy. It is not a corporation. It is not a charity. Its fundamental rules cannot be altered by anyone. It is an invention unlike any that ever came before it. As such, it is indescribable with existing words. New ones need to be created to attempt to explain it. And its creation is itself hard to describe. Nobody can quite explain how in one single act, Satoshi was able to simultaneously address the unsolvable mathematical problem and build a system that could run itself without requiring regular maintenance. Bitcoin can, and in fact does, run itself. Moreover, the system is accessible to every single human being on Earth. Nobody needs to go through a sign-up process to use it, and nobody can prevent anybody else from using it. And the system itself cannot be stopped. Even the most powerful governments in the world are powerless to stop it. It is a system engineered to essentially last forever. Its design can accommodate running for billions of years without ever running out of storage space or exhausting user IDs or even requiring any significant upgrade. Its continued operation relies only on the eternal and unchanging laws of math and physics. Bitcoin does so many things that no invention before it could. How did Satoshi do it, people wonder. But because he's vanished, no one can ask him how he did it. In vanishing, Satoshi took with him these secrets, but he left behind, abandoned, approximately one million bitcoins that he himself earned in its earliest days, long before the coins were worth anything to others. We cannot ask him why he invented bitcoin, how he remained hidden, why he disappeared, how he came up with these ideas, or where he found the strength to remain hidden after his disappearance, either at times when Bitcoin was being attacked and looked like it needed his help, or when his million coins reached a value of a billion dollars, and then ten billion dollars. We can only ask ourselves questions about Satoshi. What kind of person was this mysterious creator of Bitcoin, who solved a problem thought to be impossible to solve, who kept his identity hidden from every single person and agency in the world, who built an unstoppable and indestructible system, and who mysteriously vanished and turned his back on extreme fame, power, and fortune, rewards so often sought by so many. There are more questions about Bitcoin's story than merely those about Satoshi. In our modern world, we have been raised to believe that nations and large corporations are the world's most powerful entities, Yet, while many of these have opposed Bitcoin, seeking to ban, destroy, seize control of, or compete with it, none have managed to do so. How does Bitcoin survive despite having so many powerful enemies? Why are they its enemies? Why have some changed their views to become its allies? 
And why have so many people become believers in Bitcoin as a solution to many of the world's problems? When we hear this story, we must remind ourselves that it is not a story distorted by thousands of years of history, by changes in languages, by a lack of physical evidence to support it, or by any of these other obstacles that ancient myths suffer from. It did happen. And it is in fact continuing to happen before our very eyes. There are already many exciting chapters in Bitcoin's short history. Consider the episodes where nations like China, Turkey, and India outlaw it, or when in America, powerful politicians seek to ban it. There's the attempt by leaders of financial institutions to use their authority and influence to harm and discredit Bitcoin. Yet, Bitcoin survives all these attacks. In fact, it is made stronger by them. The battles do not end there. The heads of the world's largest banks take note of Bitcoin. They laugh at it at first. Then they vilify it. Then they welcome what they think is its underlying blockchain technology. Slowly, they begin to accept it, but they remain cautious. Huge corporations like Facebook attempt to create substitutes, mustering their huge audience, capital reserves, and reputation. They fail. Entrepreneurs and plenty of charlatans pretending to be entrepreneurs try building copycat systems. They obtain the backing of large venture capital firms. They spend hundreds of millions to market their alternatives. But these come and go like the seasons. Bitcoin is often imitated and often attacked, but never duplicated or destroyed. Were it not for the fact that Bitcoin's origin story is so fully documented and so thoroughly and provably verifiable, critics could easily dismiss this story as an unsubstantiated myth given how many attacks Bitcoin has reportedly survived. Well, this story awakens the human spirit. What makes this so extraordinary is that this is a story that flies in the face of many widely held beliefs. This story dispels the belief that we cannot solve problems that experts, scientists, and mathematicians claim to be unsolvable. It erases the belief that a person cannot maintain their privacy or keep secrets. It eliminates the belief that it is only fame, fortune, or power which motivates people. And it invalidates beliefs that nations and corporations are all powerful. All these beliefs are, by this one true story alone, completely shattered we are left with the realization that it was these old beliefs we held that turned out to be the myths. This story of Bitcoin's origin destroys beliefs so widely held in our present culture that not believing any of them could be considered by many a sign of insanity, or at the very least, a sign of being hopelessly unrealistic. After all, if you disagree that people are driven by greed, whether for power, money, or fame, you are deemed so foolishly naive that you must be stupid. If you believe you can create something worth hundreds of billions of dollars that the world's most powerful governments and armies couldn't stop, you'd be labeled delusional. If you claimed you could do this while being left completely in peace, out of the prying eyes of the media, investigative agencies, and countless others, most would say you were completely ignorant of the facts of reality. And yet, Satoshi showed all of these things were actually possible. The truth of this story forces us to accept that it was our beliefs that were false and that such ideas as these are not in fact false and insane, but true and attainable. What are we to do then? It is said that nature abhors a vacuum. When something vanishes, it must be replaced with something else. This shattering of old beliefs, then, is the entry point to a new world view. Seeing that our previous beliefs were false means we must erase them from our belief system. But we cannot leave blankness and emptiness where they once stood in our minds. We need to replace them. The telling of the story of Bitcoin in shattering old beliefs thus reveals the entry to a new world of beliefs which replace the old and cynical ones this story erased. Even more importantly, it causes us to ask what the implications of those new beliefs are. New questions arise such as, since expert proclamations may be false, which ones in fact are? Should I strive to maintain my own privacy? 
Can I too avoid being controlled by corporations and governments? What are the things that I value over money, power, and fame? As may be obvious now in retrospect, the best way to initiate a new spiritual journey is to erase old beliefs that no longer stir one's spirit, ones which maybe never did. And since this is what the true story of Bitcoin actually does, it is not surprising that many who hear it embark on a spiritual journey, one which involves asking questions like, where does power really rest today? What else might I believe that is false? What might I be able to accomplish that I thought was impossible? What might others be able to accomplish that we have been told was impossible? What might actually be possible? And how might the world be different if we do these things? Entering this rabbit hole as it is known, now freed of those previous constraining beliefs and assumptions, is the moment of spiritual awakening for many. Satoshi's story, being a true story of hope rather than a mere fictional one, rids many people of the idea that hope is just wishful thinking limited to the realm of fiction. It shows unequivocally and provably that extraordinary feats can be achieved even by a single individual. Armed with this belief that many more things are possible than previously thought, the incentive to dream and to hope and to work to make those hopes and dreams come true in reality is ignited. Watch the next episode, here. We recommend watching all three episodes. We'll see you next time.